What's up guys, Tim Little here with Tactical Bassin, Matt Allen. Building off of one of our last videos, Matt went out on the lake and was talking about the best baits for the fall transition, summer to fall. Uh, today we want to talk to you about how to specifically target the biggest fish in that transition period. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Matt, let you start off with where you were. Yeah, um, you know in the last video we talked about the baits. You know, just basically held up a box and just ran through it. And uh, we're going to cover less about the baits now because you already know what those are. Uh, but that was just some general information, you know, what the fish are doing, how they're moving. We want to talk more about that, uh, more about where those bigger fish are. Because this is a time of year where I think a lot of guys lose the fish. Uh, I don't mean hook them and lose them. I mean, they were on great summer patterns. They were catching fish. All of a sudden, those are kind of tapering off, and uh, now they're just sort of scrambling. They're looking for fish again. Uh, those full-blown fall patterns haven't come in, uh, especially for those big fish. I think the biggest thing to understand during that transition, so we, well, we'll back up a little bit. We know in summer, right, our fish are in grass or in shade pockets or, or wherever they might be. But they're not going to stay there, right? They're headed somewhere else. Grass is dying back. Bait fish are moving shallow. So we know they're on the move. Uh, when it comes to big fish, I think the most important thing to understand is that they're making the exact same move. They're not like some mythical creature. They're not off on their own. Uh, it's not like the winter time where a lot of times those biggest, biggest fish will just go off and be loners. It's really not like that. Uh, they really get in those schools. Uh, do you want to you want to play off of that? Add anything to that? Yeah. Well, backtracking. You know, the summer it's very easy to target the fish. You can see the grass match. You can see the grass as you start getting the colder nights. Start getting the storms coming in. The grass starts dying. So you're looking for that isolated that isolated grass. But the biggest thing, like Matt was talking about, is finding those schools and do not move too quickly through those schools because in fall, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, the big fish are in those schools with the little fish. You might have to catch 20 or 30 little ones before you get the big ones, but the big ones are there. And I think that's where you're going with that. That's exactly right. Uh, that's the key is that you want to understand you're not out there looking for some mystery fish by herself. You want to go find the schools. You want to find active feeding fish. Uh, and then those can oftentimes trigger those bigger fish. Uh, why don't you talk about some of that? How the, playing off little fish to get those bigger bites when they are in those schools. Yeah, we've all seen we've all seen kind of fish get fired up when the, you catch a little one, all of a sudden the big ones are kind of dancing around getting fired up. But uh, when, when you're catching these little fish, I can't tell you how many times I went to a dock where I knew there was a school and on day one and day two I caught 13 inchers, but on day three they were fives and sixes. For some reason that the, the fish grew up. So if you can find those fish, you know, how many times have you fished a dock and nothing, 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 and you fish a row of docks and nothing, then all of a sudden you come to one dock and there's all the fish. Right. So if you, for some reason, those fish are staying there. So if you, if you just keep fishing through those little ones, sometimes you can get those big girls to get fired up and then all of a sudden you go from 13 inches to, to 30 pounds. So uh, yeah, don't move too quickly. And when you do find fish on a dock, try it multiple times. Right, absolutely. Uh the, the only thing I think I want to add to that is just to reiterate, you know, I come from like that, the swim bait background, right? And I know a lot of guys that watch the videos are swim baiters. And it, all too often when we're swim baiting, you're, you're looking for that one fish, right? And your whole goal is to find that giant bass and to fool her into biting. You're throwing a big bait and you're just hoping and praying that she makes a mistake. This scenario Tim's talking about, whether it's underneath a dock, whether they've pushed bait That's in the back cool. of a pocket, does not matter where they are. Wherever those bass have gathered together, that's a scenario where you no longer have to fool a big fish. This is such a prime time because if you can get the dumb ones going, the little guys, all you have to do is catch the little guys. Catch one. <laughs> and when the little guys get mad, the big ones just get caught up in it. They just get fired up. And they get stupid. They get stupid. <laughs> yeah. Man, a fish that would never make a mistake, that would watch your swim bait by, go by every day for a month, a little one starts going crazy in their face, and all of a sudden they're on it. 
they're fired up and they'll eat just about anything you put in there. Yeah, the best way to, I think, kind of talking with Matt, um, this is going back a couple years ago, was talking about kids. You know, you try and give kids something and they don't want it. But as soon as you get another kid to want that, whatever item that is, now every kid wants it. Same thing with bass fishing or bass fishing. You get, you make a presentation, you know, the big fish doesn't want it, but you get a little one or get another fish interested and all of a sudden every fish in that school wants it and they're going to be fighting over each other to get to your baits. That's right. So. That's right. Uh, that's really the gist of it. I mean, this time of year, it can be so overwhelming for a guy who's lost his fish. But what we want you to take away is that this is actually prime time to get a big one. Because you're no longer trying to fool a big one, you're out there trying to trigger a big one. And that is a whole lot easier to do. This is a time of year where you want to get on the water, you want to go out there, cover a ton of water. Remember those baits we talked about, you know, throwing the spinner bait, throwing the, the Kitek, the lipless, the square bill, those baits that we talked about. And we'll give you all those links in the description again, because it's still that same list of baits. Uh, but when you get those baits, baits that can just cover a ton of water, but then when you get bit, it's time to park, get that school going, and then ultimately get the biggest fish out of that school. That's the goal. Yeah, fall is a great time to put a lot of fish in the boat and to put your PB in the boat. Because these fish, they're, you know, they're getting ready for winter time, they're, they're fattening up, and they're hungry, they're wanting to eat. So Absolutely. anyways, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, like Matt said, all the, all the baits and stuff from the last video will be down in the description. If you guys like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon, guys. Thank you.